is Undaunted Life, a man's podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Thompson. Let's get into it. All right, guys, uh, Friday, May 25th, 2018 is going to be a very, very dark day in the history of the world because on that day, a majority Catholic country, Ireland, voted to overturn the country's Eighth Amendment, which banned abortion. So now abortion is legal in the country of Ireland. So uh, this amendment had been part of Ireland's law since 1983, and this amendment legally declared unborn babies to have the right to life. So just to be important here and a distinction up from the very beginning, this didn't grant a child's right to life. It just acknowledged it. Okay. Because a child's right to life is given by God. This was a law that just acknowledged it. Okay. In modern political terms, this was a landslide. Okay. Uh, As many predicted that it would be an amazing 66.4% of the people in Ireland voted to repeal the Eighth Amendment with just 33.6 voting against. According to The Guardian, it was a record voter turnout. So think about this just in modern uh, voter turnout terms. About 64.5% of the population of Ireland that could vote did come out to vote for this. So uh, this... um, had a a lot of different breakdowns in different parts of Ireland. The widest margin for the repeal was not surprisingly in the very liberal city of Dublin with only one Irish voting district. And that was Donegal. Uh, They voted in majority to not repeal the amendment, but it was only 52% voting not to repeal it with 48 percent of the people saying to repeal it. So according to The Guardian, Irish lawmakers will actually move quickly to approve the legislation and allow abortions up to the 12th week of pregnancy with a uh, three-day waiting period prior to the operation. And uh, The Guardian also uh, reported this. I'll just read the quote here. Between 12 and 24 weeks, abortion will be available only in cases of fatal fetal abnormality, a risk to a woman's life, or a risk of serious harm to the health of the mother. After 24 weeks, termination will be possible in cases of fatal fetal abnormality. There will be provision for conscientious objection among medical practitioners, although doctors will be obliged to transfer care of the pregnant woman to another doctor. So I guess if you're an Irish doctor and you don't want to do it, you can just put the blood on someone else's hands. That's great. So this repeal leaves Malta as the only European country with a ban on abortion. And Ireland's progressive prime minister, Leo Varadkar, he tweeted this uh, after it came down that this was going to be repealed. Fantastic crowds at Dublin Castle. Remarkable day. A quiet revolution has taken place. A great act of democracy. I mean, I just think it's awesome that, you know, in 2018, we are so advanced as a, as a people group that we can just call it a, a quiet revolution and a great act of democracy whenever we can make an entire country that has basically protected the sanctity of human life in the womb. And now we can just celebrate this as some sort of a major accomplishment. That's just so great of us to be able to do that. Um, now, I want to point out a few things here. Um, there were some articles that were floating around uh, leading up to this because it, it became pretty apparent early on that all the predictions were that this was going to be fairly of pretty much a landslide. There was no one that was thinking that this wasn't going to pass, but uh, I think the daily wire did a really good job of kind of summarizing some of the things this was before the vote, but some of the things that were going on that kind of led to this thought that it was going to be an overwhelming victory. So the first thing that they pointed out is that, you know, this likely would have passed regardless, but the abortion advocates were very dishonest leading up to this vote. So I want to read what they said here. Pro-lifers have been advertising using Down syndrome children, pointing out correctly the eugenics-driven campaign to annihilate Down syndrome children from the population via abortion. This drove Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar to condemn pro-lifers. As the father of a child with Down syndrome, I am opposed to the propagandistic use of children like my son in attempts to limit reproductive rights, as has happened in the Irish debate, as well as in the legislative actions taking in various American states to outlaw the abortion of fetuses with Down syndrome. So, in other words, pay no attention to the fact that people are systematically eliminating children with Down syndrome from the population. Mentioning that is inconvenient. Okay. The second thing they pointed out is that the pro-abortion outlets censored pro-life messages. So this is incredibly nefarious and this should be very concerning to us even in this country. So I'll read what they wrote here. According to the Washington Post, Facebook announced Tuesday that it would stop accepting related advertisements from groups based outside of Ireland. The restriction testifies to the depths of concern that foreign advertising could skew the outcome. As Life News reported, the Post mentioned only pro-life groups. Pro-life groups, including the pro-life campaign, the Save the Eighth group, and the Iona Institute complained about the censorship. According to the UK Spectator, posters of unborn children have been torn down around Ireland. Okay. The third thing that the Daily Wire points out is that the new legislation 
goes beyond 12 weeks. Now, guys, this is incredibly important because this is not being reported. So if you go to BBC News, if you go to ABC, CNN, Fox News, it does not matter where you're getting this. They are not reporting this, but this is absolutely factual. So listen here. While the government says that its proposal would legalize abortion until 12 weeks, it would in fact legalize it up to 23 weeks. All you require is two doctors saying that the pregnancy would harm the mental health or physical health of the woman. That's an exception big enough to drive a truck through. So, so guys, let's, let's go back here. If you can get two doctors in Ireland to say that this pregnancy would harm you in some way mentally or in some way physically, you can have an abortion between 12 and 24, 24 weeks. Just think about that. I mean, the, the standard, the, the bar had been set so incredibly low that we can essentially say unequivocally that abortions in Ireland are now legalized up to 24 weeks. Okay. Let's just be real about that. And the last thing that the Daily Wire pointed out was uh, something fairly astounding, which was basically that the Catholic Church was silent. Again, this is a majority Irish Catholic uh, community uh, in Ireland. I mean, it's a very, very Catholic country. And so this is what they reported here. The Spectator has asked, rightly, why the Catholic Church, which holds an immense amount of sway in Ireland, has gone largely silent. Here's Melanie McDonough. The Catholic Church is absent from the fight to an extent that would have been hard to imagine in 1983, though it has made clear its support for keeping the amendment, as indeed have the leaders of the Protestant churches. And that's reflective of the condition of the church in the wake of successive abuse scandals. The church has a chastened position in Irish society, says Father Patrick Claffey, who has a central Dublin parish. The feeling is, let lay people do the speaking. They have the expertise and they're doing it very well. It appears that in Ireland, unborn children are about to lose their rights. As Western civilization becomes more sophisticated, it seems its treatment of the unborn becomes more barbaric. So I thought that the Daily Wire, again, did a great job of summarizing all those things. But um, I want to come in here a little bit and just talk about why this should concern us. So again, this is a mainly majority uh, male population listening to this podcast, a lot of Christian males listening here. So I want y'all to listen up because here are some things that I've kind of put together that really concerned me as soon as I realized that this was definitely going to pass. And then when the news hit that it did indeed uh, pass the repeal, that is the first thing is that morality can shift in a very short period of time. Okay. So again, in 1983, this amendment was passed with 66.9% of the vote from the Irish people. Okay. So for most of us listening in our lifetime, this amendment was passed with 66.9% of the vote on Friday. This amendment was repealed with 66.4% of the vote. I mean, think about that. That is an over 30 point swing in just over 30 years. I mean, that is not an incredibly long period of time. And this isn't like, okay, uh, you know, we went from bell bottoms to skinny jeans. This isn't like something like that. This is something that's incredibly, incredibly important. Yeah, I mean, look at what's even happened in the 2000s. Look at what happened with gay marriage. In 2008, people don't, they really like to just pretend like this never happened, especially people that are on the Democratic left. But in 2008, for the presidential election on the Democratic side of the aisle, every single major candidate for the Democrats running for president was against same-sex marriage. Every single one of them, including Barack Obama, including Hillary Clinton, including Joe Biden, they were all against same-sex marriage. But then within the Obama administration, within that run, all of a sudden, if you were a Democrat and you were against the normal biblical definition of marriage, then you're pretty much not a Democrat, right? So just think about that. Morality can shift so quickly, right? And even in relative terms. So that should really concern us. The second thing is secularism has no boundaries, guys. No boundaries whatsoever, okay? So secularism is a worldview with its feet planted firmly in midair, right? It has no governing ethic, and no morality. Again, secularism comes from the view that, that basically God is not here. There is no God. We are all highly evolved monkeys that wear pants, and we're just going to try to do the most amount of good for the most amount of people. But we can't even define what good is, right? So secularism is going to continue to infiltrate different parts of society. But what's interesting here is in the United States, 
you know, abortion has been a part of American life and American thinking since Roe v. Wade. It's been decades and decades and decades. Ireland has not had to deal with this. Now, back in 1992, they passed a couple of amendments. I think it was the 13th and the 14th Amendment that allowed Irish people to go outside the country to attain abortions which was just kind of a really weird thing. It was like, okay, we're not really going to deal with the abortion issue because, you know, everyone still thinks that it's wrong and still thinks that it's murder. But if you want to go on vacation, a medical vacation, and basically kill your baby, you can totally do that. Kind of a weird law, but, you know, to digress just a little bit. The secularism of modern culture has caused this to happen. Even in a country that is grounded so much in Catholic thinking, right? So much in Christian thinking that this could, this could happen. So the appropriate question here is what will be next? Like, that's not an alarmist point of view. What will be next? Because something's coming. I mean, all over Europe, we still have all these, uh, you know, different eugenics movements. You know, uh, the country of Iceland is celebrating the fact that it has pretty much eradicated Down syndrome from its country. So when you read that headline, you're like, wow, that's awesome. Except when you realize that they just abort every baby in the womb that has Down syndrome. Like, that's one way to get rid of Down syndrome. Sure. Just murder every baby that has it. Right. As if they have no right to life. It's just crazy. We've got to realize that secularism does not have boundaries, guys. It doesn't play by the rules. All right. The third thing that should concern us is that tradition is helpless to stem this tide. Tradition is completely helpless. Think about the Catholic Church. Like what on the planet has more tradition surrounding it than the Catholic Church? Like it's, it's one of the most traditional entities on the planet. They sat by and did nothing. Right. And so basically the the Catholic church has basically been kowtowed and, you know, basically they're walking around with their tails tucked between their legs because when, you know, you rape and assault boys for so long and as an entity, you hide that for so long, you've lost the moral high ground. And in no way, don't (laughs) misunderstand what I'm saying that I'm trying to say that this is somehow bad. They deserve every lump that they're taking for this, right? Every single lump that they're taking for what they did to systemically and systematically uh, allow for the uh, abuse of children, right? That's one of the most abhorrent things that you could possibly think of. But that does not mean that the Catholic Church is suddenly a tiger without fangs. That, I mean, just think about that. Like, this is still a powerful group that could be fighting for truth. But they think, ah, you know, we, we've kind of, we're not on the moral high ground anymore. So we really shouldn't enter into this fight. Really? Really? I mean, come on. Everyone knows what you did. Everyone knows it was wrong, but to now, you know, double down and not fight for the unborn in a country that there's a lot of people that have, you know, that you have their ear and you can have influence over to just basically sit there and be like, nah, we'll just kind of see what the people of Ireland do. That is not your place, Catholic Church. Yeah, I'm calling you out. That is not your right to do that. You have to defend the unborn. You have to defend the definition of life. You have to be able to do that. So, so many people were thinking that tradition was just never going to allow something like this to happen in Ireland. Tradition is only as important as it's viewed at the time that it's being viewed, right? So if if you're part of a tradition from a college of some kind, and they've done it this way for the last hundred years, it only matters what happens this year. So if they get rid of the tradition, the tradition goes away. It's no longer a tradition. So traditionally, the Irish people would not allow the murder of babies in the womb. But today, that's not the case. So some of us are liking, we we like the idea that we can just hide behind our traditions and hide behind our values and hide behind the way things used to be. And, you know, we just think about those types of things. Wake up, guys, because that's not real. That's not real life. Tradition makes no difference. Okay. And the last thing I want to point out to us, guys, is that we are not helpless in this fight. Okay. We are not helpless. Okay. Here's the thing. Most people just want to throw up their hands and say, well, I guess God is just going to have to take care of it. And so I'm going to be, I guess, you know, tiptoeing the line of heresy and sacrilege here, but hopefully you kind of know where I'm coming from. If you listen to to me for long enough, you probably know exactly where I'm going, but let's be real here. God is in complete control, complete control overall, right? Complete control. Got it. But we are not automatons. We are not robots. We can have a huge impact here. In order to give us the ability to love, God granted us the ability to have free will. I don't care what Sam Harris says. Free will is an actual thing. 
We can make a choice. We live in a post-Genesis 3 broken world, and we have choice. We have impact, and God can assist us. God's judgment is over all of this, right? So, I mean, there. I read an article this week about an abortion uh, uh, provider, an individual doctor that had performed over 75,000 abortions and now is pro-life, right? Think about that guy's transition. But he's got judgment coming. He's going to have to answer for that. And I don't know if this guy's a Christian, if, if he's asked for forgiveness for, you know, 75,000 murders that he individually did with his own two hands. But guys, we can have an impact. And part of that is just, just start with having your crap together. I mean, just think about how many of you guys knew that this vote was even happening, right? I mean, this episode's being released on a Saturday. I normally release episodes every Thursday morning. So I did this because I wanted you guys to know that this went down within the last 24 hours. If you're listening to this, you know, live, whenever I release it. Within the last 24 hours, the world changed, guys. Like an entire country, like the country of my ancestry. That's why this hurts even more. I'm an Irish person. I have so much Irish blood running through my veins. The country of my ancestry and my forefathers made this horrific decision. Did you even know it was happening? Did you know it was coming? Like you got to stay up on these things. And and I'm going to encourage all of you, listen to episode six of this podcast. So I'm not going to provide the link for you uh, down in the description, because if you're listening to this, you can just scroll back up on your, your, you know, Apple podcast or your Google play or SoundCloud or wherever you're listening to this and go back to episode six, if you skipped it. Cause one thing that's interesting about that episode is the plays are a little bit lower than some of the other episodes that are just around it, because I know this is a hard subject, right? And you can't assume that if you listen to any of my other podcasts that I'm not going to go into it the way that I've gone into it, right? You've got to be able to understand what is actually happening. And I'll give you a little rundown, just some of the things that you'll hear on that uh, that podcast, but it's important for you to hear it again because you can't hear it enough. It's got to be ingrained in you. Science says that life begins at conception, when the sperm meets the egg. That's what science says, right? All these people that want to depend on science and then basically argue against its findings, right? Abortion is not health care. It is not health care. It ends with something dying and that something is a person. There's no mystery as to what's growing inside a woman. Like we're not surprised when at birth it's a baby and not a ficus or a zebra. We're not surprised. It's a baby in there. What's growing inside of a woman's stomach is not, a, is not that woman. That's another thing we got to realize. You know, it's my body, my choice. That's like the favorite banner for pro-abortion people, pro-murder people. What's growing inside of that woman is not the woman. Here's some other things. At eight weeks, at eight weeks, all of the organs are present and functioning with that baby. All of the organs are present and functioning. And here is the most important stat that if you get into an argument with someone that's pro-murder, this is what you throw at them. At eight weeks, the baby feels pain. At eight weeks, the baby feels pain. It will recoil from pain. So again, go back to episode six of this podcast. I go through in-depth descriptions of different types of abortions that take place, okay? They're horrific and graphic, and I made it that way on purpose. And I'm just basically reading from medical periodicals, okay? These are not things where I'm adding to the grotesque and barbaric nature of what's happening. I'm just describing it in full and in detail. So if at eight weeks, a baby feels pain, and you get an abortion at week 12, the baby can feel itself being ripped to pieces, guys. That's real life, okay? I know some of y'all like to just, you know, I don't really want to ruffle any feathers and I don't want to really get in an argument with, you know, my, you know, pro-choice friends because they seem really loud and they seem like they, they know they got all their crap together. Stop being a pussy. Stop. Like you have to enter those, enter into those moments, right? That doesn't mean be a dick. That doesn't mean go out and like try to make everybody angry on Facebook and, you know, get on everybody's Instagram and post all these terrible comments, but we got to be real guys. It starts with us. Like, how do we expect this to change? Because in the United States, I think that we will see a reckoning here. 40 plus years and millions of children murdered later, there are things that are changing in the minds of women. Women that can actually see like what, what, like a 3D or a 4D ultrasound of what their baby actually looks like in their stomach. They didn't have that during Roe v. Wade. Their stomachs were just getting bigger. They had an idea of what was happening in there, but they couldn't see it. Now that they can see it, they can see that it's a life. It's a person in there. Okay. 
So for us guys, we are not helpless. I'm so tired of watching these guys get fired up about their you know college football team that didn't get the defensive lineman that they thought they were going to get, or getting fired up that their team didn't make the playoffs, or getting fired up that you know they their wheels on their new truck didn't come in on time, and they just get fired up over nothing, over nothing. This is real life, guys. Like, just stop with all the crap that you're like that doesn't matter. This matters so much. These are people that have the Imago Day written on them. The image of God is on these people. Who cares about your fantasy football team? Who cares about all this other stuff that you care about? It's fun and it's a hobby and I get it. This is real. This is a fight. Get into the fight. Do something. Like, get on Google and figure out something that you can do. Like, volunteer with the, with pro-life entities where you can help these women, you know, d- donate money, donate your time, donate your ability to be a man here, okay? Don't just shirk the responsibility and give it off to somebody else, all right? I know I'm getting fired up, but guys, I just don't understand. When I talk to dudes and they don't, they just kind of, oh, you know, whatever it is, what it is. It's not, it is what it is, all right? You wouldn't say that about somebody murdering your family. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't just come in and be like, ah, well, I guess someone's just going to rape and kill my wife. Uh, It is what it is. No, you would fight to protect her. Or at least I would hope so. So why don't we get in and do the same thing for these kids, all right? So guys, I know this was just a a quick little podcast. This was, you know, one that I just wanted to come in and throw out there for you guys. You got to stay up on things, guys. And so the quick resilience boost for today, just go back and listen to uh, episode six of this. Just go back and listen to that one, okay? If you listened to it before, listen to it again. Because if you don't know all the things that are happening in there by heart, then someone's going to be able to trip you up in a debate. They're going to throw out some stupid bumper sticker thing that they heard from some Planned Parenthood conference or something like that. And then you're going to be like, okay, I guess that makes sense. Okay. That's not the way to do it. All right, guys. So we're not doing the normal outro on this podcast. You guys know the drill about following us and subscribing and all that different stuff. But I really want you guys to think about this. I want this to settle with you a little bit. All right. So remember when we did the episode about Alfie Evans, like that's something that you need to ponder that you need to settle on. So no outro music, none of that stuff. Just really think about what you can be doing here. And we'll come back uh, here later on this week with another episode. All right, guys, keep seeking the Lion of Judah.